Hey, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist, and this unit here that we're going to be talking about is gases. This is the first video in a series of six, and this first video is going to be an introduction to gases, the equations, and the KMT. We're going to find out what that means. So, let's get moving. Here we go. So, there's a car with airbags that have been deployed, and that's a really important component to gases, and that's what uh, an excellent application to gases of this chemistry unit. So, how many liters of nitrogen gas is produced from a 130 gram sample of sodium azide in 30 milliseconds at one atmosphere at 298 Kelvin? That's a common airbag. So, this is the equation. You got sodium azide on the reactant side. Uh, produce, uh, this is uh, produces sodium and nitrogen gas. That's the nitrogen gas that is the part that deploys that airbag, that fills up that airbag as a nitrogen gas. By the end of this unit, you should be able to answer this question mathematically, and you should be able to come up with this number right here, and that's 78 liters. Sorry, excuse me, 73 liters. All right, so let's keep on going. Here we go. So the first thing we need to know is about phase changes. You have a solid, you have a liquid, you have a gas, and we need to know the names between these phases and what they, and what they are. So the first one here is between a solid and a liquid, that's called melting or fusion. Then we have between a liquid and a gas, and that's called vaporization. Then between a solid and a gas, that is called sublimation. Carbon dioxide or dry ice sublimates, same with iodine, also sublimates. Then we have condensation, and that's going from the gaseous state to the liquid state. Then going from the liquid state to the solid state is freezing. And then going directly from the gas state, bypassing the liquid state altogether, going to the solid state is called deposition. And you should see the solid liquid gas. As we move up in this ladder of states of matter, this is an increase in energy. That is, gases have more energy than liquids, and liquids have more energy than solids. Furthermore, there's an increase in the disorder of the system. That is, solids are very highly organized. The molecules are touching each other, they're just vibrating. Liquids, the molecules are touching each other, but they're changing places and moving around. And in a gas, what this unit is all about, they are actually, the molecules, the gas molecules are not touching each other whatsoever. So let's keep on going. Here we go. So here's an equation review. We need a little equation review before we get going, and this will um, generate all our math problems here. So our first equation here is going to be the combined or general gas law. And here it is right here. It is P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So P is for pressure, V is for volume, T is for temperature, and this uh, combined gas law or general gas law will be al also used for Boyle Boyle's law, Charles law, and Gayla Sachs's law in addition to a combined gas law problem. This is always a comparison problem. So it's what's happening at this pressure and if I change the volume, what will be the new pressure, for example. Another equation that we're going to need to know is Graham's law. And here is Graham's law. Graham's law is letting us know how much faster or how much slower one gas is compared to another gas at the same temperature. So that's why it's the rate of gas A over the rate of gas B is equal to an inverse relationship. That's why the B is over the A and the MM is for molar mass. So it's an inverse of their molar masses and a square root. So we'll see how that applies later on. The next one is the ideal gas law. And here is the ideal gas law. That is Pivnert. That is PV equals NRT. P is for pressure. V is for volume. N is for the amount of gas in moles. R is the gas constant. T is the temperature. And this is not a comparison, unlike the combined or general gas law. The ideal gas law is what's happening at this set of conditions. Then we have Dalton's law. Dalton's law is right here. That is the total pressure is equal to the sum of, pressure, of the pressures of gas 1, gas 2, gas 3, etc. Okay. And one key note here, this is the only unit which this applies, and that the temperatures must be in Kelvin when you apply it to any math problem, whether it's the general, the combined gas law, the ideal gas law, or whatever gas law you're dealing with, you must convert your uh, temperatures into Kelvin. So, here we go. Next slide. Bam. So, this, all the math in this unit is 
directed by the kinetic molecular theory. And here are the six assumptions to the kinetic molecular theory. Number one, gas molecules consist of tiny submicroscopic particles. That is, we don't see gas molecules with our unaided eye, period. Number two, the volume of the container is very large compared to the volume of the gas molecules. That is, gas molecules are not touching one another, unlike solids, unlike liquids. Number three, gas molecules have no attraction for other gas molecules. Number four, gas molecules move in straight lines colliding frequently with the container walls, on the inside of the container walls. Number five, the collisions of gas molecules are elastic. That is, no energy is lost when a gas molecule hits the sides of the container. And number six, the average kinetic energy is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature. That is, as you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy of the gas molecules, and then the gas molecules are moving faster. Or if you decrease the temperature, then the gas molecules are moving slower. And one thing to note here is that there are no ideal gas law. Uh, excuse me, there are no ideal gases. If a gas follows all these different points, that's points one, two, three, four, and five, and six, then that would be an ideal gas. But there are actually no ideal gases. These are just the assumptions to the kinetic molecular theory. And we'll find out later on as we progress forward that some of these assumptions don't really actually hold true. And then we have to apply other math to the problems. So that's the end of this first video, and that was just a brief introdu introduction, and I hope you look forward to watching my second video on gases, and that will be covering Graham's Law. And after all, I am the crazy hat chemist, and here is a crazy hat. All right, I'll see you then. Have a great day.